covered with jewels. It's going to be the most important job we've ever done. Don't be a coward, August. Flora. We've been robbing tombs for a long time now. One of these days they're going to catch us. We must go on. We can't keep trusting to our luck time and again. We've got to get out of this rotten hole. And we need money. I don't know how much those jewels could earn us. But it should be enough. They'll suffice. She was a victim of an assassin. And what if the police come back? The Irving family is still very powerful. And she was her favorite daughter. And what if we're caught? Oh, I don't even want to think about it. Let's do it, August. You know what I can do. I only want to help. You don't want me to leave you forever, do you, August? Well, come, August. Let's do it now. What are we supposed to do now? Someone has locked us in. In the name of Baron Samedi, in the name of the five ministers of the kingdom of Ife, and through the intercession of the black people of the mountains, I order you, Gloria Irving, I order you to arise and obey me. Obey me! Open the door. Please open. Oh, please! Won't somebody hear me? Doesn't anyone hear me? Open the door! Please! The door! Open the door! Please! Someone! Please! Someone listen! Please!
Let us purify ourselves, my brothers. Anoint your eyes, your mouths, and your forehead. I shall pay for my sins by offering the destruction of this body so well beloved by me. I give happiness to those who are sad. My vital breath shall bring hope to those who are in agony. All of us, your followers, O Mahasi, are grateful for your loving sacrifice and accept your truthful words. We will share in the Red Banquet. We shall begin the Black Banquet and with it our absolute liberation. Your body is like a mountain of ashes. Life is a lie, filled completely with glorious colors. The doors of wisdom open before you. Free yourselves, because Nirvana approaches soon. Approaches soon. Our master has now entered the state of complete dominance over his own prana and has dedicated himself wholly to the absolute. Please forgive me for being late. My aunt and uncle wouldn't let me get away. Whiskey. You know, my cousin Glory was my best friend, Lawrence. And they need me with them now. The only thing I can do is console them any way I can. How I'd like to get my hands on the bastard who killed her. Gloria. So young. Did I like that? Krishna is really very marvelous, you know. His words always reach the depth of my being. And he's done so much for me. Oh, he's interesting, all right. But you know how skeptical I am, Elvira. I think that following gurus is a bit snobbish. I went to the seance because you asked me, Elvira. But I'm still not convinced. Like all intelligent people in your heart, you're skeptic. But when you really get to know him, Lawrence, you'll be convinced. I hope you come with me to see him again. He'll see us privately. We have a date with him at his home tonight. And this, I assure you, is a privilege that's given to very few. Your guru seems to have telepathic powers, Elvira, because that's precisely what I was going to ask you to do. You'll be convinced, I assure you. As long as he gives me some interesting data for my book, I'll be very happy. I hope you'll get more than that from him. These daggers were used by the murderous thugs, known as the Stranglers, in sacrifices to honor their goddess Kali. This I found in Madras. It's an important relic, and a sad reminder of the barbarism which took place in my country for centuries. But along with evil and idolatry, there were men who were saints and who brought us messages of light and of peace. Krishna, this has all been most interesting, and I'd like to repeat the visit if it's possible. Tomorrow I'm leaving London. I've rented a farm in Langwell, where I plan to stay for some time. But. I shall admit anyone there who wishes to receive this message of mine. You, Elvira, will always be welcome. And you, Dr. Redgrave, my words are for all those who wish to listen. But why leave London, Krishna? A large city is not a good place for a person trying to find himself. I need total purity, which only nature is able to provide for us. And Langwell will be a marvelous sight to concentrate on meditation. 
Excuse me. It's time for prayer. Till we meet again. I'm waiting for you to tell me about Krishna. What's your opinion? The interview was quite interesting for a professor of psychiatry. There's absolutely no doubt that your guru is a fascinating person, capable of having visions as well as being a fake. And you, Elvira, shouldn't become too interested in it. It's all right with me. You're playing and being a yoga and all the rest. All right if it amuses you, but take care. Don't let it go too far. Many thanks, Lawrence, for your company. You going to the club tomorrow? Remember, we promised to play golf with Leslie and Pamela. Don't worry, I'll be there. Fine, see you tomorrow. forget now.
Thank you. Byron, you mustn't remain alone here. You've been here for three days. Why don't you leave London? Get away. Switzerland or Spain. Yes, I'll go away. To the only person who will be able to help me. Krishna. Yes. I already wrote that I was arriving. Very well. If you think that will help you. All right, Alvira. I myself will take you there. No, thank you, Lawrence. I'll go by train. I prefer to. Have you spoken to Superintendent Hawkins about this? Yes, he has my declaration. He finds no possible reason for my not leaving London. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. I've got some urgent problems at the clinic that I've straightened out. But in a few days, I'll be there. for someone? Yes, I thought I was supposed to be met, but they're not here yet. Come with me and wait in my office. I'm the station master here. My name is McMurdo. It's very cold out here. Yes. Thank you, Mr. McMurdo. Please. We rarely see strangers here in Langwell. Do you have family living here? Yes, an aunt and an uncle, the Irvings, but they moved to London. Ah, yes. After the business with the girl, it was horrible. I knew them very well. She was my cousin, my closest friend. After that, I just don't understand how you have the courage to return. This is an evil place. I have a friend here. His name is Krishna Sanatan. Ah, yes. The man who bought the... the devil's house. They tell me he's very wise. And people have come to respect his valor. Valor? For years, the house was closed and uninhabited. But why? The people who lived there were the Watleys, a family that was cursed. It is said that they had a pact with the devil and that they celebrated the black mass and sacrificed women and children. One day, the villagers, horrified by their crimes, descended on them and killed them all. They hanged them from the trees. Then they closed up the house and no one since has wanted to buy or rent it. Not until your friend arrived. He has servants, but they're not from around here. No one else would have come here. This is not a good city. You hear me? Good evening. I suppose you are Miss Elvira Irvin. Yes, that's right. I am T. Zachary. I've been sent by Mr. Krishna. Master's not feeling very well. That's why I've come. Bye for now, and thanks for your hospitality. Good night, miss. And good luck.
Welcome, Sister Avira. Wonderful to see you, Carla. <laughs> this way. Elvira, you can't imagine how happy I am to see you. I'm happy too, Krishna. Very happy. Krishna, they tell me you went very well. If the spirit dominates you, it's not an illness, Elvira. A terrible thing has happened to you. But don't forget that only through our sorrow can we achieve happiness, which all of us desire. Krishna, at your side, I should be consoled. I know that. Susan, prepare some supper for our guest. And you, Kala, accompany her to her room. See that she's comfortable. Pardon the modesty of our house. You know, Krishna, but I never look for luxuries. I'll be right down. Elsie, take a heater up to our guest room, will you please? Mm-hmm. Elvira, you must be very tired. And it's quite late. Yes, of course. It was a long trip. <laughs> Good night, Krishna. Again, welcome, Elvira. Have beautiful dreams. Elvira, you have fallen into the trap, huh? I am a water. We are all Watleys. You will be food for our Lord's sake. Waiting. He's waiting.
Elvira. Modo, the man at the station, told me about the legend that surrounds his house. I was affected by it. When I came to buy it, they spoke of the Watleys and of their pact with Satan. They said the house was bewitched, a silly superstition. It was peaceful and lovely. Do you think that anything so pure would harbor anything or anyone malicious? You're right, Krishna. You make me forget my nightmares, my memories, my fears. I have so much faith in you. What's wrong? Carla told me that you were very ill. Yesterday, your appearance... But today, I've recovered all my energy. These crises are fleeting. And when I have them, believe me, my spirit becomes stronger. Much stronger. I was born in Benares. My youth, my childhood were difficult. Terrible things happened then. I left India, abandoning all to search for my inner peace. I studied, traveled all over the world. I went to Tibet, very close to heaven. And there I learned many things. Also, Africa taught me many things that I was searching for. And now that I've found myself, I can bring my message to other men. I couldn't wait any longer to see you. I had to come. This is crazy, Olivia. One of the guards could have seen you enter. Hmm. I have the key to the private door. No one saw me enter. And your husband, what did you tell him? Absalom, how frightened you are of that butcher so coarse and vulgar. It was built a giant industry. Yes. Industrial products, Catagon. That idiot husband of mine. I told him I was going to play cards with the Carters tonight. And as you can see, I've come ready to play with you.
Good afternoon, Doctor. Hello, Larson. I'd like you to look in the catalog. Works about fakers. I'm looking for uh, commentaries and aphorisms of the Patanjali by a certain Wami. Let's hope we have some luck and we're able to find it. Oh, I read your last two books, Dr. Redgrave. And what'd you think? I found particularly interesting the study you did about voodoo. And also, the one about exorcism was very good. Hmm. And now, what are you preparing, Dr. Redgrave? I figure it has something to do with India. Fakers, yogis, on that order, right? Yes, that's right. Mm -mm. Oh, but this one has to do with the sexual organs. <laughs> Swami, pardon the mistake. Here you are. This is it. Thank you, Rasa.
I've asked you to come here today because the case is beginning to take on certain characteristics that are, shall we say, uh, misleading. Putting us off. You're a well-known psychiatrist, as well as being an expert on occultism, of black magic, and all those things. We think you can help us in our investigation. For this reason... It's evident that the person responsible for all these disappearances and killings is a madman. A madman who believes and practices black magic. This abnormality can turn itself towards murder. Then later, he steals the corpse for purposes we can't figure out. I too am very interested. Above all, since the death of the father of Elvira. But there's very little that I can deduce. The information in the newspaper is pretty scarce. The Prime Minister has prohibited any further information until we catch the killer. The panic would really get out of hand. I remember the statement that Elvira made. At the time... It seemed absurd. I guess because of the state she was in. But when I checked on certain things, it started me thinking. Here's a resume of all the data and investigations. A waxen doll. Melted wax from near the desecrated tombs that were violated. Drops of human blood. Corpses that have disappeared. Voodoo. Voodoo. Hawkins, here in London, someone is resurrecting corpses. Creating zombies. Zombies? I only have a vague idea about this. Perhaps you can tell me just what is this voodoo. In the Antilles, the great Levudu, and consequently of the zombies, it was the black Senegalese slaves of Africa who believed in these things. The person capable of discerning the secrets of voodoo had to be able to give movement to the chosen ones who had no will of their own, the dead who walked, but who on the other hand were faithful and totally efficient. This magician with his supernatural powers had to be someone authentically initiated. Go on, an initiate. Yes, an initiate they called the minister, who in order to obtain his wishes, had to conjure certain evil spirits, which were called Montes, who by means of a black mass, would intercede before the Baron Samedi, so that the novice could accomplish his duty and become master of the living dead. Who is Baron Samedi? Someone, how do I say it? Satan. When all is propitious, first the magician enters the tomb of the person he wishes to enslave. He will pour the human blood of a man, if the body is that of a woman, and vice versa, if it's a man. All this done over a waxen image, resembling that of the corpse. Then he burns the waxen image. Invocations. Walking dead. Wax dolls. Lawrence. We're in Scotland Yard, in London, in the year of our Lord, 1972. Oh, well, continue. In the previous ceremony, that is, at the invocation of Baron Sumedi. The witch sacrifices the black chicken at a precise astrological hour. He himself will become immortal, cutting the throat of a woman and drinking her blood. The woman who is chosen is always the loved one of someone closely related to the novice. For all these ceremonies, the witch uses a medium chosen for her docile spirituality who serves as intermediary for the Montes. What more is there? Zombies are afraid of fire. They are destroyed when the master dies. That's all. It's... it's fantastic. Makes my hair stand on end. But to get in better communication with Baron Sumedi, one has to practice the rites in certain places. For example, at a crossroads where someone has been hanged, somewhere where a child has been murdered, in a haunted house, and so on. This is all perfect madness. But I'm afraid that madman's going to give us more trouble than Jack the Ripper and John Reginald Christie together. However, there's something in this case that I don't quite catch. 
And they're yet again that the killer uses. Strangling the same way the thugs did. We've also been able to establish a coincidence, a surprising one. Now look. All those murdered women whose bodies had been stolen from those tombs belonged to families who had lived in India and knew each other. Families that remained in the country after it became independent in 1947. Um, later, about 10 years later, around 57, uh, something serious happened in Benares. Of a violent nature, like a killing. And these families became involved. And this obliged the Irvings, the Hendersons, the Mortimers, and the Mortons to return to England. Because in Benares they were no longer welcome. And this included suffering threats. And what happened? You know, the families were important, and the affair was closed. Besides, as you know, the killer operates in different places, at great distances. Naturally, the murderer goes where he knows he can come across the women members of these families. We've got to find out who his next victim will be. And if we can stop him. God willing. Have a suspicion. Nothing too concrete. I have to check on some things. And pretty soon you'll have news from me, Hawkins. I'll see you soon. Clear. Good morning, Calla. I slept like a baby. I couldn't believe it. When I awoke, I saw what time it was. It's noon already. <laughs> <laughs> the sleep was good for you. And Krishna, where is he? He left early for London. He had things to tend to there. He'll be back tonight. Oh, all right. I think I'll take a walk through the garden. Very well. When lunch is ready, I'll call you.
Oh, and Byron. Lunch is ready. Langwell. How's that? At 7.40. All right, fine. Krishna, Elvira must leave here. She needs us. She needs our care. She must have faith. But haven't you seen her? We must protect her. And you, Kala, don't be jealous. away from here at once and don't fall in love with Krishna. Tonight, I'll wait for you in the shed in the garden. I'll show you something there. Don't fail to come for your own good. Morning, Elvira. Like to what? The car's waiting. That'll be lovely. I'm all ready. I love you, Krishna. 
I always have. But I know I'm going to lose you. Call the police, then. No. Call the police? No. Krishna. But why, Krishna? Why? idea the superintendent giving us this job. If all this about the zombies is true, what are we supposed to do? Uh, with this, there's not a zombie that can resist, I'll tell you that, Edward. No. <laughs> 
May you be damned. I have a warning for you. You'll pay the price for interfering. Because your destiny will be worse than the others. Infinitely worse for you, Elvira Irving. I haven't broken anything. The worst thing is that everything is ruined. I have to go back to the village. I'll take you. Get in. Besides, we should have a doctor in Langley look you over.
and obey me. again for your personal ruin as planned. You were chosen for a glorious mission to help. You were given the maximum power to spread your sacred voodoo all over this whole earth, not to wreak your wretched vengeance on others. In a short time from now, I shall be immortal, and my vengeance accomplished. I shall have the powers of a god, and you will die, as did Susan. You are both traitors. I listened to your lies, and I killed her. Now I know that you are the traitor. But one of us is going to come, and you are going to pay for your guilt. <laughs> Kill him. Two of my best agents killed, but in what a horrible way. It's evident, base heart that we're dealing with something terrible. Much more evil and dangerous than the worst of criminals. What could have happened to Redgrave? He said he would contact us and we've heard nothing yet. He's not at the clinic, nor at his apartment. Could be that he's dead too. You understand, Basehart? At any moment, we could receive the bad news. Convert her into one of those. That was your intention. Why don't you do it now? Krishna loves her, and when we celebrate the great rites, her blood will make me immortal. Only then will I convert her into a zombie. Only then! She's robbed me of Krishna. I have always been faithful. I've obeyed all that you have asked. If you won't, I'll kill her myself. She will live as long as I say, and you will continue to obey me. No, not now. You're in my hands now. I know all your secrets. And I can destroy you. You will continue as my slave. But then... <laughs> my older brother Kantaka fell in love with the young English girl in Benedict, whose name was Elizabeth Irving. She flirted with him and got him angry by being sweet and not caring. Until one day, she invited him to her bungalow. There my brother raped her, which was the cause of her death, although it appeared she died accidentally. Crazed with what he had done, he fled and hid in the outskirts. Three families from England, all related, got together to help the Irvings wreak their vengeance. They destroyed the house, set it on fire. They thought that my brother Kantaka was dead. But no one knows how. My brother, with his face monstrously disfigured, saved himself. But that's horrible. When all this happened, I was in another city and also thought that he was dead. A short time afterward, the families involved in the case abandoned India. I too went away and traveled throughout the world. Finally, I settled in London. And one day, my brother Kantaka came to see me. From that moment on, I was like a toy in his hands. He did what he wanted. And I helped elaborate a plan so diabolic that only one perverted could have thought it. I remember something of all that. I was very young when we lived in Benares. I remember my father was sorry about it. Yes, he must have been terrible. Then he became a novice of voodoo in its most diabolic form. He had a fixed idea of destroying, using his occult powers, all the families that had wronged him. To fulfill his plan, he would use the most beautiful girls in the hated families 
as instruments to achieve his vengeance by turning them into zombies. Then, his plans went further than that. My brother converted me into a slave, who served as a medium. In ceremonies of voodoo, I'm sure there were other horrors that I was involved in while I was under his power. Have you never tried to free yourself? Yes, but he has tremendous powers and has always won. But now I must save you. We'll win. You'll see. be asleep by then. I'll leave the back door ajar, but please, do take care. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. It's Lawrence Redgrave. Yes. Yes, I hear you. What? Oh, yes. Langwell? Krishna Sanatan? Then you couldn't see Elvira Irving. Yeah, yeah. Well, they told you she wasn't there. But the maid knows she is, you think? Oh, well, tonight. Uh, with the maid, of course. <laughs> but Lawrence, you know this is housebreaking. Now, what you should do is... Uh, Mace Hart, we're going to Langwell. Everything gels, if that's the case. Well, let's try to get there in time. Because if we don't, that fool Lawrence is going to get into a hell of a mess. become another of those women without a soul. Elvira, you will give me immortality. You see, I will exterminate all my enemies, and my power will be infinite. Krishna, put an end to her. Use the Atagan. No, 
Captain Tucker, forgive me. Forgive me. one who was sent to watch you. Traitor! You have destroyed the voodoo. You have used its force without dignity. I have come to destroy you. I'm going to kill you and that stupid meddling Lawrence. You will then become my zombies. Because my mission is to create an empire. An empire of the dead who will conquer the living. <laughs> 